hello everyone welcome to the course in this lecture i am telling you about bad guys and good guys or hackers and ethical hackers the difference between an ethical hackers and a hackers is something that can easily get you into an argument just saying the word hacker in the wrong place can get you into an hours long conversation of the history of hacking and how hackers are all good guys who mean nothing but the best for the world others will tell you that hackers are all evil and have nothing but bad intentions in one case i was even told the hackers were originally model 10 enthusiast who happens to like computers you must understand that for us hackers are separated by intentions in our world wide hackers who intend to cause harm or who do not have permission for their activities and considered black hats whereas those who do have permission and whose activities are being are white hats calling on site good and the other hand may be controversial but in this book we will adhere to these terms black hats they do not have permission on authorization for their activities typically their action fall outside the law white hat they have permission to perform their task white have never share information about a client with anyone other than the client gray hat this hacker course into both offensive and defensive action at different time another type of hackers is the hackivist hackivist is any action that an attackers use to push or promote a political agenda target of hackivists have include government against and large corporation now code of contact and ethics as an ethical hacker you will need to make sure that you adhere to a code of conduct or ethics to ensure you remain trustworthy in the case of the ec council eech credential you are expected to adhere to their code of ethics in your dealing list you be decryptified in order to make sure you fully understand what you will be expected to abide by when you become a ceh i have provided the official ec council code of ethics here read it and know it to make sure you are comfortable with everything expected of each as a ceh keep private and confidential transformation gained in your professional work particular as it pertains to client list and client personal information
not collect give sell or transfer any personal information to the third party without client free or consent protect the intellectual property of other by relying on your own innovation and efforts thus ensuring that all benefits vested with its originator disclose to appropriate person or authorize potential degrees to any e-commerce client the internet community or the public that you reasonably believe to be associated with a particular set or type of electronic transaction or related software or hardware provide service in your areas of competence begin host and sporty about my limitation of your expression and education ensure that you are qualified for any project on which you work to propose to work by an appropriate combination of education training and experience never knowingly use software or a process that it obtain to retain either illegally or unethically not range is appropriate divide fine particles such as bribery double billing or the important financial practice use the property of the client or employer only in a properly authorized and with the owner's knowledge and consent disclose to all concerned parties those conflicts of interest that cannot reasonably be avoided or escaped ensure good management for any project you left led including effective procedures for promotion of quality and full disclosed research add to the knowledge of the e-commerce profession by constant study share the lesson of your experience with fellow by constant study share the lesson of your expression with the fellow ec council members and promote public awareness of benefit of elements commerce conduct yourself in the most ethical and competent manner when socialing professional services of seeking employment this has mer- meriting confidence in your knowledge and integrity ensure ethical conduct and professional care all the time to all professional arguments without prejudice not associated with malicious hackers nor engage in any malicious activities not purposely comment or cues to be compromised the client organization system in the course of your professional dealing ensure all penetration test activities and authorized and within legal limit no take part in any black hat activities or be 
associated with any black hat community not take part in any black hatters activities or be associated with an bracket column that serves an danger network not be part of any underground hacking community for purpose of preaching and extracting black hat activities not be in violation of any law of the land for any previous conviction that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome to the course in this lecture i am telling you about switched network sniffing switch network present an inherent initial challenge to sniffing a network in its entirety a wide switch does not allow you to sniff the whole network as you saw in each sniff shot is a collision domain so traffic within the switch does not travel between ports and of switch talk your goal is to be able to sniff the network portion you want to or will to achieve this you can use the various technique that we will explore in this section mac flooding one of the most common methods of enabling sniff sniffing on a switch it to turn it into a device that does allow sniffing because this switch gives traffic separator to each switch port you want to convert it into a hub like environment a switch gives trace on mac addresses received by writing them to a content addressable memory table if a switch is flooded with mac addresses it may easily overwhelm the switch ability to write to its own cam table this is done mac the switch fell into a giant hub there are a few utilities available to accomplish this technique now what is a cam table all cam table have a fixed size in which to store information a cam table will store information such as the mac address of each client the port is attached to and any virtual local area network information required in normal operation a cam table will be used by the switch to help get traffic to its destination but when it is full something else can happen in order switches the flooding of a switch would cause the switch to fail open and start to act like a hub once one switch was flooded and acting like a hub the flood would spill over and affect adjacent switches in order for the switch to continue acting like a hub the intruder needs to maintain the flood of mac addresses if the flooding stop the timeouts that are set on the switch will eventually start clearing out the cam table entirely 
thus enabling the switch to return to normal operation. It is worth nothing that in newer switches this has a decreased chance of being successful with the implementation of technologies such as IEEE 8021X and the presence of other features such as sticky max support in modern hardware. Overflowing a cam table using Ubuntu is a simple matter. The standard response repositories store the tool needed for a successful attack and can be easily obtained with aptitude. To use aptitude to obtain the required tools, so to root the typing the following. At this point, the utilize will start flooding the cam table with invalid MAC address. To stop the attack, press Ctrl Z. That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to the course. In this lecture, I am telling you about recording SID numbers. All SIDs start with S1521 but are otherwise unique. If the penetration tester can choose to decode the whole SID to determine in depth information about a user or group. But let's look especially at user's account. The two main accounts have some unique properties. Especially this account ends in 5000 for the administrator for 501 for the guest. This holds true no matter which Windows system you have. So if you see accounts ending in these numbers, you have hit pay dart. You will also find SIDs on every installation of Windows that correspond to certain built-in accounts. For example, the S1518 SID can be found in any copy of Windows you come across and corresponds to the local system account. The system account that's loaded by Windows before a user logs on. The followings are a few examples of the string values for group and special users that are universal across all Windows installs. Null SID. This is assigned when the SID value is unknown for a group without any numbers. Now world. This is a group consisting for every user. Local. This SID is assigned to users who log on to a local terminal. Even though you use a username to access the system, Windows identifies each user. Groups or object by the SID. For example, Windows uses the SID to look up a user account and see whether a password matches. Also SIDs are used in every situation in which permissions needed to be checked. For example, when a user attempts to access a folder or shared resource, note that SIDs are never reused. So where does all of this get stored? Obviously user and group information is very important and we need a place to store and keep track of all on of it. In Windows 
this is the security accounts manager simply put the security account manager is a database on the local host that contains the username and password of those who have accounts on that specific system the security account management is wrapped up in and part of the windows registry for each system within the security account management sorry manager each user account is assigned certain pieces of information information associated with an account comes in the form of a password which is stored in an encrypted format in both lan manager hash and ntlm hash formats this hash allows the computers to determine if the password entered by the user is correct or incorrect and needs to be rented now complete path the svm files is located on each windows host in the folder however only this extreme circumstances such as a corrupted windows installation or similar situation should you even consider tampering with this file removing alternating or missing with the file in any way could easily cause the os to become unbootable that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome to the course in this lecture i am telling you about sql injection and buffet overflows are hacking technique used to exploit weakness in application when program are written some parameters used in creation of the application code can leave weakness in the program sql injection and buffer overflow are convert in the same because they both are methods used to attack application and are generally caused by programming flaws generally the purpose of sql injection is to convince the application to run sql code that was not intended sql injection is a hacking method used to attack sql database hence buffer overflows can exist in many different type of application sql injection and buffer overflows are similar exploits in that they are both usually delivered via a user input field the input field is where a user may enter a username and password on a website add data to a url or perform a search for a keyword in another application the sql injection vulnerable is used primarily by unverified or unsanitized user input via this field both sql server injection and buffet overflow vulnerabilities are caused by the same issue invalid parameter that are not verified by the application if programmers do not take the time to validate the variables a user can enter into a variable field the result can be serious and impredictable sophisticated hackers can be exploited this vulnerability causing an execution fault and shown of the system or application or a common shell to be executed for the hacker sql injection and buffer overflow counter measure and designed to uh, utilize secure programming method now sql injection as a ch it is important for you to be able 
to define SQL injection and understand the step a hacker takes to conduct a SQL injection attack. In addition, you should know SQL server vulnerabilities as well as countermeasures to SQL injection attack. SQL injection occurs when an application process user provided data to create a SQL statement without first validating the input. The user input is then submitted to a web application database server for execution. When successfully exploit, SQL injection can get an attacker access to database content to allow the hacker to remotely execute system commands. In the worst cast scenario, the hacker can take control of the server that is hosting the database. The exploit can give a hacker access to a remote shell into the server file system. The impact of SQL injection attack depends on where the vulnerabilities is in the code, how easy it to exploit the vulnerability and what level of access the application has to the data space. Theoretically, SQL injection can occur in any type of application, but it is most commonly associated with web application because they are most often attacked. Web hacking Google web server web application vulnerabilities and web based password cracking technique web application are easy targets because by their very nature and the open of being accessed from the internet. You should have a basic understanding of how database work and how executable commands are used to access the information in the data set prior to attempting the CES exam. Finding a SQL injection vulnerability Before launching a SQL injection attack, the hacker determines whether the configuration of the data space and related table and variables is vulnerable. The step to determine the SQL server vulnerable that is using your web browser search for a website that uses a logging page or other database input or query field. Look from web pages the display the post of get html comments by checking the site source code. Test the SQL server using single quotes doing to indicate whether the user input variable is sanitized or interprets literally by the server. If the server responds with an error message that says use a equal to A, then it is most likely susceptible to a SQL injection attack. Use the select command to receive data from the database or the insert command to add information to the database. The purpose of SQL injection. SQL injection attacks are used by hackers to achieve certain rules. Some SQL exploits will product valuable your data stored in the database and some are just precursor to other attacks. The following are the most common purpose of a SQL injection attack. Identify SQL injection vulnerability. The purpose is to probe a web application to discover which parameters and user input fields are vulnerable to SQL injection. Performing database figure printing. The purpose is to discover the type and version of database that a web application is used and fingerprint the database. Knowing the type and version of the database used by a web application allows an attacker to craft database specific attacks. Determining database schema. To correctly stack drama for a database, the attacker often needs to know database schema information such as table name, column name, 
and column data type the information can be used in a follow on attack extract data this type of attack employ technique that will extract data value from this data depending on the type of web application this information could be sensitive and highly desirable to the attacker bypassing authentication the purpose is to allow the attacker to bypass database and application authentication mechanism bypassing such mechanism could allow the attacker to assume the right and privilege associated with another as a application user performing privilege exclusion this attack take advantage of implementation error or logical flaws in the database in order to exculate the privilege of the attacker that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome to the course in this lecture i am telling you about active online attacks this attack type is the active online attack this attack gives a more aggressive form of penetration that is designed to recover password now password gushing password gushing is a very crude but effective type of attack an attacker seeks to recover a password by using words from the dictionary or by brute force this process is usually carried out using a software application designed to attempt hundreds or thousands of words each sound the application tries all variations including case change substitution digit replacement and reverse case of course one item to note is that many system employs account logout which looks the account when too many failed attempt occur to refine this approach an attacker may look for information about a victim with the intention of discovering favorite pastime or family names now trojan spyware and keylogger malware is discussed in depth elsewhere but here we should mention its potential role during an attack malware such as trojan spyware and keylogger can prove very useful during an attack by allowing the attacker to gather information of all types including password one from is keyboard sniffers or key logging which interprets a password as the user enters it these attacks can be carried out when users are the victim of key logging software or if they regularly log on to system remotely without using protection now hash injection this type of attack release on the knowledge of hashing that you acquiring during our investigation or cryptography and a few tricks 
the attack consists of the following four steps number one compromise a vulnerable or station or desktop number two when connected attempt to extract the hashes from the system such as domain or enterprise admins number three use the extract hash to log on to server such as a domain controller number four if the system serves as a domain controller or similar attempt to extract hashes from the system with the intention of exploiting other accounts password hashing Passwords are not stored in clear text on a system is most class because of their extremely sensitive nature. Because storing passwords in the clear is considered risky, you can use security measures such as password hashes. As you learned, cryptography hashing in a form of one way encryption that is used to verify integrity passwords are commonly stored in a hashed format so the password is not in clear text when a password provides by the user needs to be verified it is hashed on the client side and then transmitted to the server when the store has and the transmitted hash are compared if they matches the user is authenticated if not the user is not authenticated now offline attack offline attack represent yet another form of attack that is very effective and difficult to detect in many cases such attack really on the attacking party being able to learn how password are stored and then using this information to carry out an attack now pre-computed hashes or rainbow tables pre-computed hashes are used in an attack type known as a rainbow table. Rainbow tables compute every possible combination of characters prior to capturing a password. Once all the passwords have been generated, the attacker can capture a password hash from the network and compare it with the, with the hashes that have already been generated. With all the hashes generated ahead of time, it becomes a simple matter to compare the capture hash to the ones generated typically, revealing the password in a few moments. Of course, there's no getting something for nothing. The rainbow table are no exception. The downside of rainbow tables is that they take time. It takes a substantial period, sometimes days, to compute all the hash combination ahead of time. Another downside is that you cannot crack password of ultimate length because generating password of greater length takes more time. Now generating rainbow table. You can generate a rainbow table many ways. One of the utili utilities you can use to perform this task is Winner Gen, a GUI based generator supported hashing format. In this utility, included all of the that is. Cisco Pix, Fast LM, Half LM Chal, LM, LM Chal, and MD2.
एम डी फोर एम डी फाइव एम एस कैच माइ स्केल थ्री टू थ्री माइ स्केल शाई एन टी एल एम एन टी एल एम चाल होराकल रिफोडम वन हंड्रेड Rainbow table are an effective method to revealing password but the effectiveness of the method can be diminished through salting salting is used in linux unix and vst but it is not used in some of the older windows authentication mechanisms such as lm and ntlm Solving a hash is a means of adding entropy of randomness in order to make sequence or patterns more difficult to detect. Rainbow tables perform a form of cryptanalysis. Solving tries to thought. This analysis by adding randomness. Although you still may be able to break the system, it will be too hard to do. That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching.